Craig Jones here, BGJ Fanatics, number one seller. You get treated different when you're the number one seller. They build you your own studio. Fully endorsed by BGJ Fanatics, Fuji mats have hooked us up with some beautiful floor mats. These floor mats here, very, very good quality. If you go to a gym and they're running some puzzle mats, you might be in a third world country, or you'd hope you're in a third world country. A lot of mats out there, you see the um, rollout mats, too slippery, useless. We want the tatami with the grip on it. If your gym that you enter has no grip on the mats, it means they don't wrestle or they don't at least stand up to pass. It means they are a group of cowards. You should find a new gym. You see some other weird ones out there with a full top over the top, sealing what's underneath. You don't know what's underneath. Probably shitty mats. They're probably hiding some shitty mats under there. The top as well, way too slippery. Gives you mat burn. If you go into a gym and we're not running this type of game, find a new gym. We have this studio actually hidden within the B team gym itself. The rest of the guys at the gym, the rest of the business owners and stuff, they're just too dumb to overcome a secret door. I'd recommend getting one of these for your gym as well. So we got this secret door here that leads right into the studio. And this comes right out of the B team gym. So you obviously could do a bit of an intelligence test if you visit the B team gym and see if you can find the secret door. Nicky Ryan has been looking for this door for six months now, but I told him, hey, you cannot step foot into the new studio until at least you make day two of ADCC. Obviously, that's a possibility for Nicky Ryan. Sadly, not a possibility for Ethan Crowlins. We've also got some wall mats here. These are just like the floor mats, however, they're just stuck to the wall. But what makes these this area so special is this beautiful trim we got here. This is very important. This is all part of the package deal. If you go to a gym and they don't have any framing like this, fucking losers. Find a new gym. You need a base of support for these wall mats. We also have some floor trim as well. Floor trim's important too because people have their mats flying out. We get space in here. People get injured, they break their toes. If Nicky Ryan breaks a toe, we don't see him for 18 months. So we really need to be very careful about keeping these mats together. BJJ Fanatics, all my instructionals you'll find that are filmed here will be on BJJ Fanatics. I'd recommend not using coupon codes, not waiting for daily deals. I recommend paying full price because we, we hide a few scenes in there for those lucky few that pay full price. Guys, we're gonna break down a wrist lock video that went viral on our channel. I'm pretty sure it's probably at 20 million views. I was doing this with David. It was a rolling footage of a wrist lock with David. Uh, yeah, it is a technique, but it's mostly David making a terrible decision and me trying to humiliate him as much as possible for that terrible decision. One of the best submissions from Mount is obviously the arm triangle. I know that, person on bottom knows that. They try to do a lot of things to prevent the arm triangle, but there's very few good decisions. You know, there's very few creative options you can take here that other people haven't already thought of. So we had the cross face, we had the underhook. Freddie, if Freddie doesn't defend, obviously we're finger walking up, we're taking the arm across, yeah? Um, and again, we're finger walking up at the elbow, not at the armpit, because he keeps his elbow down. Now, even a man as physically imposing as Freddie could prevent the finger walk. But as we get closer, to the lever, end of the lever, we get to this point here where he's much weaker and we can start to bring it up. So when I do that, what David did, he tried to grab my shoulder here. Like he was trying to hold my shoulder down, even though it's actually my elbow that drags his elbow up. So he was trying to do that. And then another option, he tried to bring his hand back through. So he tried to pummel it back through here. Obviously if there was space, he could do that. Pummel the hand through, yeah. But of course, we're not really gonna leave that space there. So first he had his wrist on my shoulder here. As I started to bring it up, he thought it'd be a good idea to try to pummel it back through. But you can see, I jammed it under my chin here, right? So I grab it like a dog with a chew toy and I collapse my chin over it. Now Freddie's hand's kind of stuck. I can keep this pressure and start applying wrist lock pressure in. So again, we're here in mount. We get to that elbow position. We started walking. If they try to re-pummel and there's no space, 
we just catch it under our chin here. This is pretty solid here. Freddie tries to slip out. It's kind of difficult here. We can try to track it here. So you can see that time it landed on the shoulder, but generally speaking, we're gonna catch it under our chin. And I sink back. The higher I am here, the easier it'll be here for him to slip. So when we catch it, I try to sink my weight back onto it, taking away as much space as possible here. And I just drag my weight over the knuckles and I roll it back to the wrist there. So again, we can put a lot of pressure on the wrist lock. The best thing about wrist locks is quite often, guys will try it, will actually verbal tab. So you get that uh, extra little bonus there. Yeah, as you can see, yeah, guys panic. Obviously it feels horrible. It feels both horrible and humiliating. So obviously one of my favorite submissions we could do.